Baker, do you expect that as the season starts, since you have so much turnover at receiver, that teams are probably going to try and load up you, load up on you to try and stop the run? I think if they don't try and do that, they'd be foolish just because of the personnel we have inside. Uh, I mean, we have three of our five returning linemen back and, and a competition going on at the inside spots, to, and, and it's driving those guys to be better. And then, I mean, that's not even to mention our running backs. Uh, that, that, that room is, I think, the best talent of uh, running back room you have in the country. I mean, those guys, uh, I, I trust them with our whole offense. So I think uh, fully expect people to try and load up the box. What has stood out to you more than anything in these first three practices? Uh, well, the competition's been great. And I think that even the defense being younger, uh, it, it's been good to get out there and, and compete against those guys. I think um, them not having as much experience, and but they're still competing with the offense, who I expect to be top five in the country, if not the best. They, they've been competing with us very well, so it's been good to see that, for them to come out with a little fire and ready to go. Baker, what wide receivers have really improved their games from spring last year through summer and these first three practices? Uh, I mean, there's there's so many to, to, to name off, but um, A.D. Miller, uh, Dahu Green, Jeffrey Mead, uh, people haven't even heard of Nick Basquin yet, but he, he might wind up starting for us, but he's going to play a lot anyways. Jarvis Baxter, um, even Mark's improved his game too. He, he's leaned up more and he looks very good right now. Um, and then Jordan Smallwood's playing really well right now, which is good to see because he hasn't been healthy in a while. So everybody's kind of playing well, which is, is good for me. Do you challenge those guys or do they take it personally? Because, I mean, you, you're coming off of a, a, a season where the offense was so dominated by Sterling at receiver that I, they I, never really made a name for themselves. I challenge them a lot, and the coaches do too. Uh, I think uh, I, I've mentioned it a couple times, but I think they're sick and tired of hearing that our receivers aren't going to be any good because Shep's gone. Uh, they should absolutely take that personal. Um, I mean, they're, they're here playing receiver at Oklahoma for a reason. So um, I trust them, and, and they're playing well right now, and we're only going to keep progressing as uh, camp goes on. You didn't mention Mike Hill. Can you talk about him? Any? Yeah, Mike Hill. Uh, like, like I said, too many people to name. I even forgot about Mike Hill. He's a guy that when he first got here, we were kind of we were very impressed with uh, how he looked physically. I mean, he's not a, he's not a big guy, but he's he's ripped up and uh, he, he's quick. He's very shifty and he's got great ball skills. He can go up and, and jump. He's kind of a player that I think his game is is more similar to, to Sterling than uh, any other receiver. Um, kind of a smaller guy, but plays a lot bigger uh, and very explosive. Baker, it's a different kind of offseason for you. You knew your role and, and you were going to be the guy. Was it more different the way that you handled yourself or the way that others looked at you as you went through the, the uh, offseason process? I felt through the spring and through camp now, uh, even though it's the beginning, uh, I've been a lot more loose, whether it, it's not playing up tight, but uh, my work ethic has been the exact same, if not even uh, even harder. So uh, I've been pushing myself, and, and I need those guys to see that because if they were to see me taking a day off or, or just saying that, oh, I've got it figured out, then that wouldn't be good for the program. So uh, I've been working hard, and, and that's how I expect those other guys to do it too. How different has that been for you? Just a different dynamic of this year. Uh, it, it's been different to not have the same guys around the locker room, but uh, I'm trying not to handle it any, way, but any other way besides just taking on a more vocal leadership role and, and push those guys to, to be the best and, and, and how it should be. How does having a guy like Samaj back there help you as a quarterback, and how amazed are you that he has a chance to break the school rushing record at a place like this? It's pretty special, and uh, I said it at Big 12 Media Day, I'm going to do everything in my power to get him the ball enough times to break that record because that's, that's pretty special, and I know he's not worried about it, but um, if we're able to establish the run game with him and, and Joe, that's going to set up the rest of our offense and, and kind of set the tone. So that's, that we're going to try and run the ball first, uh, and, and we should be able to do it too. How important was it was for Austin to be here in the spring, and how has his first summer and first days of practice been? It was huge for him to be here in the spring to kind of get a jump start in the offense and uh, be around the guys through spring ball, which when you come here and you graduate early, it's more of you already do your red shirt year back in the spring. So um, even though he's going to be a true freshman now, uh, he's already had experience. He's been around the guys long enough to where they trust him. And he, he's progressed very good. Um, I think Coach Riley's uh, got, begin to m be more and more comfortable with him because he's kind of taking a leadership role. I think he realizes that he, he is going to play uh, no matter the situation. He's going to play at some point this year. And um, he needs to be ready. And, and he's been preparing that way too. Has practice been different? <coughs> playing, not playing Akron the way you did last year, getting ready to play Houston and then Ohio State County. 
Uh, not only practice, but the kind of the summer workouts were a little bit different too, just because we, we realized we have to be ready from the get-go. Uh, first game's against a very good opponent, and our, and our season's kind of, the front part of it's very loaded up, and so we, we've always, or we have been preparing um, to, to be ready for the season at the very beginning, to know that we can't have any rust to knock off, that we have to go in already ready to play, and um, that, that's how we're treating camp right now. We know who we have on September 3rd, but at the same time, it's, it's about working on us and getting better as, as a team. Baker, the Big 12 rule change obviously is a benefit to you, and I know the administration here helped make that happen, but five or 10 years, there may be another athlete in a similar situation. Have you given thought to the fact that kind of being a trailblazer and kind of leaving a legacy for other athletes? I haven't thought about it much. Uh, it, it's pretty special to have just been able to get the opportunity to have another year here, and that's that's the way I looked at it. Um, and so it's, it's the right rule change for walk-ons to be able to to choose where they go to school since they are paying their way. And that's the way I look at it. And the, the Big 12 was, was right for making it that way. What is it about Nick Basquin that, that has you so high on him? Uh, he, he came in and he had great ball skills. He's very good at catching the ball. He's got soft hands, but he has been working his butt off for the past two years to get his body right. Uh, physically, he looks a lot better than he did when he came in. And, and you could say, yeah, he was a freshman when he came in, but he, he looks very good right now. Uh, he looks like he should be starting. So, um, and I'm proud for his work ethic because he, he went out all last year. You could see all the extra work he was doing uh, during practice. He would go off to the side and, and kind of work with the strength coaches on explosive drills type things like that. And, um, at, I'm just happy that a guy like that that's put in so much work is going to be able to have some success after it. Is that something you did as a walk-on? You, you have to put in the extra effort, and then you have to take advantage of your opportunities because they are limited, and, and that's what he's been doing, so that's why he's in a, a good spot to play. When you first started to get to know Coach Riley, what struck you about him as a coach or offensive mind, and just how has that relationship and trust developed? Uh, when I first met him, he seemed like a very relaxed, laid-back type of guy, and that's how he carries himself in the meeting room. He, he's not a guy that's going to yell at you, but at the same time, he can, he can kind of crack the whip when he needs to. Um, and so I respect him a lot because he, he knows when to flip the switch and, and be serious, but at the same time, he's, he's a guy that you, you can just talk to. And, and, and I, have, I very much enjoy that, to, to be able to go into the meeting room and when we're not talking about football, to just be able to relax. How much more comfortable have you been in the off season, knowing you're the guy versus guy that's fighting for a starting job, that, that you can, guys can look to you and say, that's, that's our quarterback? It's been huge for me. Uh, not just the fact that guys are looking at it that way, but I think from, from spring ball to, to camp right now, I'm, I've been able to play loose and, and aggressive, which is the way I like to play. And so, um, and, and not worry about making mistakes. I can go out and be who I am and, and, and play the game that, that I was born to do. And so I'm able to go out there and play free and uh, not have a worry about um, if I'm going to lose my job after one mistake, I don't have to worry about that. But I'm still having that same competitive edge if I was in a QB battle. Does it, does it bring you closer to your teammates and bring your teammates closer to each other when they have a, you know, when they have a leadership like that? It, it does. And that's why we've had, we've had a good, strong leadership group that we've kind of had the past couple of years. And uh, we're going to try and continue that to get a couple main guys that, that everybody kind of, if there's a decision that they consult with those guys. And um, it, it's, been, it's been good to have uh, myself and then guys like Samaje and, and even our younger linemen, Orlando Brown, and Alvarez, and Drew Samia. And then you go on the defensive side and there's, there's a couple more. And uh, to have guys like that, to have experience and, and people can look up to in any situation, uh, that it's good to have in a program. What do you think of the coaches bringing in people like Rick Tracy <laughs> to speak to, to the team during fall camp? It's huge. Uh, for, for guys to sit there uh, in fall camp, is, it can get exhausting. But then you, you get guys like that. And then you, today we had Bosworth talk to us. And so you talk to some guys that know what they're talking about. Uh, and you listen to them. And they, they've been in the same shoes or they've been at the same level. Um, so you have to have respect for guys like that that have knowledge of the game and the situations that we go through. Um, and so it, it's easy to, to relate to them. And you got to trust what they're saying. Baker, how does the offensive line look, um, especially now with, with uh, Jonathan moving over to center? Is that uh, connection been good so far? It's been good so far. I John did a good job of watching Ty. Ty was a very smart player, always knew what he was doing. So he uh, got to watch Ty for a couple of years. And then now he's in his own, uh, he's controlling his own path now. But um, it, he's 
he's been done a good job of putting us in a good situation, and then it also helps to have Orlando and Drew at tackles to to have experience too, so we can kind of surround those younger guards with with experience and trying to teach them the ropes.